What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So, undefeated, unified, WBO, WBA, IBF, WBC franchise, lightweight, ring magazine, world champion, superstar, boxer, Teofimo Lopez. He would talked about and discuss his promoter, legendary promoter, top ranked CEO and promoter, Bob Arum. And Bob Arum's recent statements that Teofimo Lopez asked to uh, receive his minimum to fight his mandatory and undefeated Australian lightweight title contender superstar George Cambosis Jr. In which Teofimo Lopez, he could afford the likes of a Ryan Garcia, a Javante Tank Davis, or a Devin Haney in an undisputed match. But he chose to go in a different direction and ESPN and top rank are not eager to put up big money for him to face off against George Cambosis Jr., in which the IBF and even Teofimo Lopez's manager, they stated that they could have asked for an exemption and they would have been pardoned to have a bigger fight. So Bob Arum, he stated that this is not a high profile, high quality fight. And even a minimum of Teofimo Lopez will receive is 1.2 five million dollars which is his minimum to face george cambosis jr and top rank doesn't even view that they don't think that's valuable they don't think that teofimo lopez versus george cambosis jr is worth 1.2 1 million two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for teofimo lopez who's the unified world champion who defeated uh nakatani richard Comey for the ibf uh belt and then Vasil Lomachenko, who's a three-division world champion, two-time Olympic gold medalist, and was unified lightweight champion, superstar Basa. Teofimo Lopez beat him all in dramatic fashion. Nakatani fight was somewhat questionable. People thought that Nakatani may have exposed a little bit of flaws in Teofimo Lopez's game, but Richard Comey, he knocked him out in dramatic fashion, and Richard Comey just got a one-punch one knockout victory this past weekend, so they made that victory look even better. Nakatani, you know, he beat Felix um, Verdejo in dramatic fashion, probably fight of the year fight. That fight, that win over Nakatani looks better. And obviously, we know what Lomachenko has accomplished. With that said, Bob Arum stated that he could have went into a sizzling fight. These are the words that Bob Arum used against Ryan Garcia, undefeated, rising, Mexican lightweight title contender, superstar boxer or two-division world champion, undefeated superstar boxer, who is a WBA simultaneously hold that 130-135, Javante Tank Davis, or undefeated WBC lightweight world champion, superstar boxer, Javante uh, Devin the Dream Haney. So Bob Arum stated that, you know, um, he chose to go in a different direction and chose to fight his mandatory for the minimum, right? So... He chose to go in the direction of fighting his mandatory, George Cambosis Jr., when he couldn't have gotten an exemption. And his manager stated that that if top rank Bob Arum and ESPN didn't view the fight with George Cambosis Jr. as a high-profile fight, then they should have informed them when it was first brought to the table and they could have made plans to negotiate a bigger fight. And his manager stated that... Uh, they understood that George Cambosis Jr. was on the table, but this was for Australia. To have the fight staged in Australia with 60,000 fans in attendance would garner uh, this being a high-profile fight for Teofimo Lopez's brand and his name. But since the fight is going to take place in Las Vegas in the bubble and nobody knows who George Cambosis Jr. is outside of hard, hardcore boxing fans, then this is not a big fight. So Bob Arum is saying that this is not a high-profile fight and Teofimo Lopez is asking for big money. Teofimo Lopez, he states in response to Bob Arum by saying and admitting, I'm not even asking for big money. I'm just asking for my minimum. Uh, and then Teofimo Lopez, he states that, you know, uh, well, he's looking forward to seeing the other companies, other networks, other platforms bid on this fight February 18th. He says February 18th is five days away and y'all see how this plays out. Well, the problem is that you chose to go in the direction of fighting George Cambosis Jr. When you could have chose to go in the direction of fighting Devin Haney in unification bout and asked the IBF 
to give you an exemption as your manager and as Bob Aram and IBF has stated, they would have gave you a pardon and not forced you to have to fight George Cambosis Jr. In which Teofimo Lopez, he stated that the IBF was uh, telling, informed him that if he didn't fight George Cambosis Jr., that he would be stripped of his title. But in fact, the IBF said that they would have looked into giving him a pardon if they were informed that he did want to go in a different direction, as well as his manager stated that if Bob Arum and ESPN, the platform, didn't view the Cambosis fight as a hot commodity, then they could have petitioned the IBF to get a pardon as well to go in a different direction for a big fight. So that makes it abundantly clear that he did not have to fight George Cambosis Jr. He chose to fight his mandatory, as he states in the interview, that he simply hanging around and looking around and waiting until we get the conclusion of Jose Ramirez, Josh Taylor fight for undisputed at junior wealth, at junior welterweight at 140. So he says, when asked, can you still make 135? Would you stick around the division for these big fights? And Teofimo Lopez says, well, I'm going to stick around this division to make these fights happen with these other fighters, with Devin Haney's and, you know, with Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia. I'm going to stick around and make it happen. And then in the same breath, when asked if he could still make the weight, he says, I'm going to stick around this, this weight class until I get a conclusion to a Josh Taylor, Jose Ramirez fight. Well, they're looking to fight in two weeks. So with that said, how is he sticking around for Devin Haney's, Teofimo Lopez, Ryan Garcia's of the world when he's looking to get the winner of Josh Taylor, Jose Ramirez fight? And they'll have a conclusion to the winner of that fight in a short period of time. Unless he's it's a certain uh, fighter, maybe he's looking to fight, you know, um, Jose Ramirez, who signed to, you know, um, top rank. Maybe that's easier for him, an uh, easier fight for him to make. Um, but Josh Taylor and Jose, Ram I mean, and Josh Taylor and, um, and Jose Ramirez, excuse me, I said two weeks, are looking to fight uh, <clears throat> very soon, okay? So with that said, you know, um, I, and both of the fighters have stated that the winner of that fight, Josh Taylor, Jose Ramirez, they're looking to move up to welterweight and challenge Terrence Crawford in a big, lucrative fight. So they, I said in two weeks, and two months, excuse me, uh, they're looking to fight in two months. So um, he's stating that he's going to fight soon in June against George Cambosis Jr. They're looking to fight each other in two months. So if they're going to fight in two months, then he's going to have a conclusion to the winner of that fight. So you have no plans to stick around 135 and challenge the Devin Haney's or the other guys in the, those divisions. So he says, I'm just looking to become undisputed in <clears throat> two different weight classes. So with that said, Josh Taylor and Jose Ramirez, they're looking at a, a May date. They're just waiting for Canelo Alvarez, Avni Yildirim fight to come to a conclusion to see what uh, date Canelo Alvarez plans to fight Joe, uh, Billy Joe Saunders uh, Cinco de Mayo weekend, which is could possibly be the Cinco de Mayo falls on a Wednesday. So it could be the Saturday before, which is the first, or it could be the Saturday after, which is the eighth. Um so they're looking to place their fight either on the 15th or on the 22nd of May. Okay, Josh Taylor, Jose Ramirez for Undisputed. But they made it abundantly clear. And Josh Taylor said, stated that if he wins the fight, he wants to fight Terrence Crawford. And so did Jose Ramirez. But Josh Taylor also made it clear that he, hasn't too, he doesn't have too much interest in fighting Teofimo Lopez. He says that Teofimo Lopez needs to clean out his own division and officially become undisputed by beating Devin Haney. He says that would be a big fight. So Josh Taylor doesn't show much interest. Jose Ramirez, and they're very big guys for junior welterweight. Both guys are five foot ten. Both guys have made it abundantly clear that they struggle to make the weight at 140. They don't have too much time in junior welterweight, and they both plan to move up to 147. So he's honed in on fighting the winner of that fight, but he's not going to move to the front of the line to fight the winner of that fight. Because the winner of that fight more than likely is going to vacate the titles and the, and move up, and the loser is as well. So uh, it's not going to happen that he's going to fight Josh Taylor, Jose Ramirez winner. Uh, and so he states that, unless it be known that he petitioned Bob Arum to fight this George Cambosis Jr. IBF mandatory challenge fight uh, because he just simply wanted to stay busy and he just want Bob Arum to give him his minimum 
that he, money that he's looking for. Let's listen to what he had to say. I'm not even asking for, for, for any of that. You're giving me my minimum. So, uh, ain't nothing personal. It's just business. So you hear what he said. He says, it's not a, anything personal. I'm just asking for the minimum uh, amount of money that I'm supposed to receive, that I'm due to receive to fight George Cambosis Jr. Bob Arum and ESPN has no uh, interest in paying that money. Bob Arum stated that he would allow it to go to a purse bid and he would allow, you know, um, whomever to win the purse bid because they have Tiafimo Lopez signed for three and a half more years. So after his fight with George Cambosis Jr., Bob Arum stated that maybe he'll pick up some more fans, bring them to ESPN and uh, have the big fights on ESPN. So this is a fight. They've made it clear that he did not have to fight. He wanted to stay busy. He wanted to stay active, and that's un that's understandable. Uh, George Cambosis Jr. is his mandatory, uh, but he could have fought a bigger fight in his next fight, which would could have been Devin Haney, but he opted to go in a different direction, and now we know he was not forced to fight George Cambosis Jr. He chose to fight George Cambosis Jr., thus the reason why Bob Arum and Top Rank are not willing to uh, come up off uh, – a low number of $1.25 million for Teofimo Lopez, which is his minimum. That's what he's looking to gain, his minimum. Listen. I'm not even asking for, for, for any of that. You're giving me my minimum. So, uh, ain't nothing personal. It's just business. So, there you have it. He he admits that it's, it's his minimum. Uh, he petitioned them to fight George Cambosis Jr., they just wasn't on board with it, and they don't want to pay him. But that's all I got for y'all. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy, Blue, Blue Blood Sports TV. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV, all one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire LDBC. Shout out to New Media. Shout out to Black Media Row. Make sure you like and share these videos. That's all I got for y'all. Peace.